China's chip strategy isn't just about making semiconductors. It's about rewriting the global order of technology. For years, the United States and companies like NVIDIA dominated the world's most advanced chips. But now, China is closing the gap faster than anyone expected. From massive state-backed chip factories to alliances stretching across Asia and the Middle East, Beijing's plan isn't to catch up. It's to take the lead. The outcome could determine who controls the future of AI, defense, and even global finance. So, how did we get here? And what happens next if China actually wins the chip war? To understand China's chip revolution, we need to look back, not just at Silicon, but at survival. When the US imposed its first wave of export bans in 2019, China suddenly realized that modern life, from smartphones to AI, depended on chips they didn't control. For Beijing, that was unacceptable. Chips became the new oil, and the message was clear. Whoever controls chips, controls the future. China's response was swift and massive. Within months, it launched the Made in China 2025 plan, a national roadmap to achieve semiconductor independence. The government poured over $150 billion into state-backed projects. Universities began fast-tracking semiconductor programs. Even military engineers were reassigned to chip design. The mission wasn't about profit, it was about sovereignty. Then came the tech sanctions on Huawei. When Washington blocked Huawei's access to TSMC and advanced US chip tools, the company's smartphone business nearly collapsed. But instead of dying, Huawei reinvented itself. In just a few years, it developed the Kirin 9000S chip, manufactured domestically using Chinese-made equipment from SMIC, a remarkable achievement considering China was supposed to be years behind. This success sent shockwaves through the global tech world. If Huawei could do it under sanctions, what would happen when China's entire industrial complex got behind the same mission? Beijing doubled down. It created national chip funds, incentivized engineers to return from abroad, and even offered lifetime grants for semiconductor researchers. The result? China now produces more than 70% of its domestic chip demand, up from just 30% five years ago. Most of these are not cutting edge, but they're enough to power cars, IoT devices, and even mid-range AI systems, key areas that generate enormous scale and data. And this scale matters. Every chip manufactured in China feeds into a massive ecosystem, an ecosystem that learns, adapts, and improves faster than any centralized Western model. The government doesn't just build factories, it builds networks of companies that share information, software, and AI models in real time. This makes Chinese chip development almost evolutionary, constantly iterating, optimizing, and expanding. But here's the real shift. China's strategy isn't about copying Silicon Valley anymore. It's about outgrowing it. The country is focusing on good enough chips at massive scale, affordable, accessible, and made entirely within its borders. And in a world where demand for AI processors, EV chips, and smart infrastructure is exploding, good enough can still dominate the market. The West might still hold the top of the pyramid, but China is rebuilding the base, brick by brick. And once you control the base, you don't need permission to build your own empire. When the United States realized that China wasn't slowing down, Washington decided to tighten the screws. New export bans targeted NVIDIA's AI chips, especially the high-performance H100 and A100 processors used to train advanced artificial intelligence models. These chips are the brainpower behind everything from ChatGPT to autonomous weapon systems. The US government believed that by cutting off NVIDIA's access to Chinese customers, it could stall Beijing's AI ambitions. But the result was far more complicated. NVIDIA lost billions in potential sales, and China didn't retreat. It simply pivoted. Within months, Chinese firms like Huawei, Baidu, and Alibaba began developing their own AI accelerators. Huawei's Ascend 910B chip, for example, now rivals the performance of NVIDIA's A100 in several benchmarks. That sent shockwaves through Silicon Valley. NVIDIA, which once saw China as its biggest market for AI, suddenly faced an unpredictable future. The company began redesigning its chips, creating export-friendly versions like the H20, specifically made to comply with US restrictions. 
But those chips were still weaker, and Chinese firms knew it. They took it as a challenge, not a setback. Meanwhile, Beijing doubled its orders of lithography machines and chip-making tools from friendly countries like the Netherlands, Japan, and South Korea before restrictions tightened further. Each new sanction became a training exercise, forcing China's engineers to innovate around the rules. Paradoxically, the more the West tried to contain China, the faster it adapted. Now, we're entering an era where tech warfare isn't just about hardware. It's about information control. The chip battle is also a data battle, where it's stored, who owns it, and who can access it. AI models, personal data, and even trade secrets are now digital weapons. And this is where protecting your online security becomes more than just a tech tip. It's common sense. Because while governments and corporations fight over chips and data, your personal data is also part of that ecosystem. Every search, every login, every transaction can be tracked, sold, or blocked depending on where you live. That's why it's critical to protect your digital privacy, especially now when technology and geopolitics are more intertwined than ever. That's where today's sponsor, NordVPN, comes in. NordVPN helps you stay secure and anonymous online by encrypting your connection, hiding your IP, and protecting your data from hackers or tracking networks. Whether you're researching global markets, trading online, or just watching content abroad, you deserve to do it safely and privately. Right now, NordVPN is offering an exclusive discount of up to 77% off, plus an additional free month on your plan. Just or click the link in the description to grab the deal before it expires. As NVIDIA scrambles to adjust its business model, investors are asking tough questions. Can the company sustain growth without China? Or will Beijing's self-sufficiency eventually undercut its dominance? The irony is that while Washington's sanctions were designed to slow China down, they may have accelerated its independence instead. And as the next generation of AI chips begins to emerge, one thing is becoming increasingly clear. This isn't just a commercial competition anymore. It's a technological cold war. The chip war between the US and China isn't confined to two superpowers anymore. It's reshaping the entire global economy. From Taiwan to Saudi Arabia, from Singapore to Germany, nations are being forced to choose sides in a silent but decisive conflict over who will supply the world's digital backbone. Let's start with Taiwan, home to TSMC, the world's most advanced chip maker. For decades, TSMC served as the neutral bridge between East and West, manufacturing for Apple, Nvidia, and Huawei alike. But as Washington pressures Taipei to limit cooperation with Beijing, that neutrality is vanishing. Taiwan now faces growing geopolitical tension, not only over security, but over supply chains that could determine the future of the global tech economy. In response, China is forming new alliances. Countries in the Middle East, especially Saudi Arabia and the UAE, are investing billions in AI infrastructure built on Chinese chips and software. These nations see opportunity, cheaper, reliable access to advanced computing power without the political strings attached to Western tech. Beijing calls this tech diplomacy, and it's working. Every new partnership strengthens its position as a global tech alternative to Silicon Valley. Meanwhile, Europe is caught in the middle. The EU wants to remain technologically independent, but depends heavily on US semiconductor design and Asian manufacturing. The European Chips Act is an attempt to change that, with plans to produce 20% of the world's chips by 2030. Yet even European firms like ASML and ST Microelectronics find themselves walking a tightrope, trying to serve both US and Chinese clients without angering either side. But perhaps the biggest surprise is how emerging economies are benefiting from this rivalry. Southeast Asia, for example, has become a major production hub as companies diversify away from China, but still rely on its vast logistics and component networks. This China plus one strategy might sound like decoupling, but in reality, it's just restructuring globalization around China rather than removing it. In short, Beijing's chip strategy has already succeeded in one critical way. It forced the entire world to reorganize its technology supply chains around its existence. Whether they like it or not, 
every nation, corporation, and investor must now consider China as a central pillar of the digital future. And this transformation is just beginning. The next phase won't be about factories, it'll be about AI ecosystems, data ownership, and energy control. And that's where things start to get truly unpredictable. China's chip strategy goes far beyond factories and manufacturing. It's about building an entirely new model of power. In the 20th century, power came from oil. In the 21st, it comes from data and computation. The more data you can process, the more influence you hold over economies, defense systems, and even culture. Beijing understands this better than anyone. By developing its own chips, China isn't just ensuring self-reliance. It's securing control over the AI infrastructure that will define the next century. Every data center built on Chinese silicon, every cloud platform powered by domestic GPUs, strengthens a self-contained technological ecosystem that can operate independently from the West. At the heart of this transformation is a national strategy known as the Digital Silk Road. It's China's plan to export AI, 5G, and cloud computing across Asia, Africa, and Latin America, creating an interconnected web of countries reliant on Chinese technology. These partnerships aren't just commercial, they're strategic. Once a nation adopts Chinese-built AI infrastructure, it naturally becomes part of Beijing's data orbit. This is why Washington is so alarmed. The United States spent decades shaping a world where American companies set the technological rules through Microsoft, Intel, Google, and Nvidia. But now, that control is fading. China's companies are offering alternatives that are cheaper, faster to deploy, and, most importantly, untethered from Western sanctions or political oversight. And it doesn't stop with AI. Beijing is investing heavily in green chip production, merging semiconductor fabrication with renewable energy. Imagine data centers powered entirely by solar farms in Xinjiang or hydro plants in Sichuan, feeding massive AI factories that don't depend on fossil fuels or Western components. That's not just technological progress, it's economic resilience. For the US and its allies, this presents a dilemma. Competing with China now means investing not only in chips, but in entire digital ecosystems, AI, energy, and cybersecurity all at once. NVIDIA may still lead in performance, but China's strength lies in scale, integration, and sovereignty. In essence, Beijing is creating a parallel digital world, one where Western approval is optional and data is the new diplomacy. And as this system grows, its gravitational pull will reshape global markets, trade routes, and the very definition of technological independence. As the world watches, the balance of technological power is shifting before our eyes. What once seemed impossible, China rivaling the West in chip design, AI, and innovation, is now a reality. The question is no longer if China can catch up, but what happens when it does? The chip war has become much more than a trade dispute. It's a contest for the digital soul of our planet who writes the algorithms, who stores the data, and ultimately who defines the limits of human progress. Whether you see China's rise as a threat or a wake-up call, one thing is certain. The next decade will be decided not by weapons or oil, but by wafers, code, and energy. For the United States, NVIDIA, and the rest of the world, this is the defining race of the 21st century. And how it ends will shape everything, from our economies to our privacy, from our investments, to the devices in our hands. If you found this analysis insightful, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to FinCrafted, and share your thoughts below. Do you think China will take the lead, or can the US still turn the tide? Your comment could spark the next big debate.